Welcome to First Garden, New Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. Weeding is an important aspect of gardening. No matter what type of gardening you do, you're going to have some level of weeds. Now you're going to have much less weeds if you do in a container or raised bed because you're importing that soil into your garden. But if a traditional ground garden you have, you're going to have weeds no matter how prevalent you are of extracting them from your garden. So a couple things you want to keep in mind is Wait until the weeds get a little bit higher than just as emerging from the ground. These weeds here on the edge of our walk path are a little too big, but we want to go ahead and pull them out. Now when pulling weeds out, you want to try to pull as much as the roots out of the ground as possible. I know that you're not going to get them all out and that we understand that. But the reason being is a lot of these plants propagate from the roots, so if you just rip the plants out at the base or you take a hoe and cut them off, those roots are going to regrow much like a cut and come again vegetable. They're going to come again. So you want to try to extract as much roots out of the ground as possible. That's where a good flat tine pitchfork, garden fork, not a hay fork, comes into play where you can actually get in around those roots. You're aerating the soil as well as you have a better opportunity to pull as many roots out as possible. The saying of one year of seeds equals seven years of weeds is absolutely true. That meaning if you let your weeds in your garden go to seed, you're going to have at least seven years of seeds, uh, weed seeds coming up because some weeds seeds are viable just sitting dormant in the ground for over seven years and it's a long, long time to fight. And that's also a reason why we try to limit the amount of tilling that we do. By limiting the amount of tilling, you're limiting the amount of opportunity for those dormant seeds to move up closer to the surface and get a lot more moisture and potential sunlight to germinate. Now along our back perimeter here where our rabbit fence is, we do have weeds coming up as well as weeds that are beginning to put seed pods on. So we're going to come in here and knock this down. It's not in the grow area, so we can actually just take and trim it down and manage it that way, but you want to be aware that you know, if things are going to seed, you want to get them out of your garden because they will have seeds for next year. As well as seeds can come in through birds or through the wind. If you have a neighbor that has a very large open area that has a lot of seeds, you, there are mesh fencing you can put up to prevent some of those seeds from blowing in on your property. Let's go on the high end of the garden and kind of work it, pulling some of the weeds that are at adequate size so we can pull them and get as much of the roots out of the ground as we possibly can. So we're up in our brassica bed here. and You can see we've got, uh, I don't know if this is water grass or it's a weed, I know that. So this is about the right size to pull it. It's you know, three, four inches tall. So we're just gonna get our, our uh, fork here. And these roots, as you can see, I'm loosening the soil up to the point where I can get as much root as I can out of it. And again, you're not going to get all of the roots out, but you can get as much as you possibly can out. And I just ripped that one off, so that one will come back. Also, you'll sometimes have trees coming up into your garden, and that's a walnut tree that's been there, who knows how long that seed's laid dormant. So we get that out of there. And you can see all the worms, just in that little handful there, I've got three, four, five, six different worms that's come up. So we don't wanna disturb the worms. And that's one of the key elements of using a tine fork versus a shovel in the garden. Once the plants fill in like we have in our beautiful garlic bed here, you just wanna come in and you just don't want to use your fork to disturb the soil because you could potentially puncture or disturb the bulbs as well as if you're doing potatoes with the fork. So you just want to come in here and realistically just uh, pinch them off as best you can. Now it works best about two days after a light rain that the soil is very moist. A lot of the roots will extract from the soil very, very easily. Put these weeds in your compost pile, get that, and, and make sure that if you have weeds that are going to seed and you're putting them in your compost pile, be sure that compost pile is warm enough that it will kill the germination capabilities of those seeds, and that's about 160 degrees for three consecutive days. If you don't have that kind of heat, get rid of the, you can dispose them in other means and matters. I'm Joy Baird, 
And this has been First Garden, New Gardener. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.